So hello, everybody. It's two minutes past the hour. Uh, I say a good hello to you. Good morning, good evening, whatever you are. I welcome you to the third webinar, which we have in our webinar series on the 6456. And today we will have a presentation about the new cold water cleaning performance test in the sixth edition. And for that, I will hand over to Felix Frey, who is one of the speakers of today, and he will present himself and then will directly go into the topic of today. Felix, please. Felix, we can't hear you. Please switch on your microphone. Thank you, Ryan, <laughs> on this technology. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, today, we want to talk about uh, cold water cleaning performance. And uh, we have made a presentation for you, which is also later on available online at different uh, parts. So I start directly with the presentation. I hope you can see now my presentation. Yes. Can you see it? Good, good. Then I will start. Today's webinar is, as we said, about uh, cold water cleaning performance. It will be presented by myself, uh, Günter Brocho from Swissatest and uh, Kudo Yoshiyuki from Panasonic Japan. A first short introduction of uh, the three person which we'll present today. I start with myself simply because I'm online in the moment. Uh, I'm a consultant, a free consultant and work over 20 years for IC uh, 6456 for 59D in several working groups. And especially I was uh, working on the cold water wash test as well as on gentleness and action and on the wool parts. I had the pleasure to uh, develop certain of the test materials, what you are using now in, in this IC tests. We have Günther Burcher from Swissertest, who makes most of the test material of what we are discussing today. He will introduce himself uh, very shortly when he presents the part, uh, what he is responsible for. And we have another one. Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gents. My name is Yoshiyuki Kudo from Panasonic in Japan. I work for washing machine development team and also work as an um, ICSC 59D expert. Today, I'd like to introduce you to what it means to develop cold water wash test method for Japan and Asian nations. In Japan, the typical laundry method is cold water wash in 10 minutes washing, total 30 minutes in, including rinsing and spinning in vertical axis washing machine. You see, so different from warm water wash in horizontal axis washing machine that current IC evolution method is based on. This is why there is a demand for testing method that is appropriate for cold water wash. Thank you very much. Now, the webinar topics here will be uh, the following. First of all, we will answer the question, why is a cold water wash test needed in IC 6456? You know that we can make cold water tests at 20 degree, just the standard way. But as Kudo mentioned uh, just a second before, this is a different kind of washing what we have. We will explain what the differences are. But first of all, then we uh, hear some statements also from uh, people who are concerned with this cold wash system. And then we ask uh, what exactly is the cold water cleaning performance test? What can we test? And where are the differences to the main standard? In detail, will this be explained later on by Günther Burcher, who uh, will uh, have his presentations for that. And last but not least, if you have any questions we need uh, to answer for you, please do not hesitate afterwards and we can discuss anything what you like to give you a better information about the test. 
The third question is why is a cold wash test in IC really needed? When I was a child, I had the fortune that I did not have to make a wash. My mother did, like very likely most mothers worldwide did for their kids. But about several things I was 100% sure. I was sure that everybody had a horizontal axis machine and washed at 60 degrees or perhaps sometimes at 90 degrees, but that at cold water level. We had no problems in Switzerland with water. We had a lot of water, energy, electricity, that was not the question, or gas. The gas prices has been extremely low, so we did never think about that. Years later, I learned that this is not the truth. Most people in the world wash these vertical axis machines, and they are using cold, temperatures. So let's have a look at that. When we look at the market shares of washing machines worldwide, then we can see my ideas as kids for Switzerland have been true. Europe is not using horizontal, uh, vertical axis machines, nor are they washing with cold water. But this is actually an exception in the world. Most people work with machines which have a vertical axis and they are using cold water or not heated water to make their washes. If you look here on the right side, for example, in the Americas, and that is true for North and South America, more than three quarter of all washing machines are vertical axis machines with no heating. And the same is true for China and Japan. They are washing totally different than what we are doing in Europe. Also in Australia, where it is 50-50, but the rest of the world, same is true. Most machines are vertical axis machines and most work with this cold wash system. This is another market share study of washing machines and it shows, readily marked, that over 60% have no heating rate on their washing machines. So we cannot say this is something very special or so, it is normal in most parts of the world. Another thing is that we have washing machines which can heat, but we are still using or also using it cold. For example, here you can see an example of China where we can see the blue part, this is cold wash in washing machines, which can be heated. And you see also a, a rosa part of 30%, very much, which are selected by default settings that also can be called. And that means all in all, we have a lot of people in the world who wash this cold water. You may ask now why we did not call this uh, cold water wash test simply cold wash test. The reason is that we also already have, of course, cold temperatures in IC 6456, but used in a different way. This I will explain in a second. We at IEC think that it is necessary to be closer to the real world of consumers. And that means we have to include the behavior of vertical axis machines as well as their use. We started about 20 years ago uh, also to integrate vertical axis machines into our thinking. That was especially from uh, Japan wished at that time. And of course, also the use of cold water system is very relevant. We have made, or uh, we will show you here, some of the statements of users all over the world, uh, what they really think about uh, the cold wash. Hello, everyone. I'm Sato 今回、コールドウォーターウォッシュの導入により、IC 
世界の多様な選択習慣に I think there is a slight mistake. Sorry about this. Yeah. Thank you all very much. In China, I found people around me still prefer cold wash. For most of vertical axis machines, there's no heater. So people just use cold water to wash by natural. But with front load washing machine with the heating function, people still prefer cold wash, even they were told heating can help the wash performance. It can save energy, some of my friends think. The program can be shorter, other thing also. And they don't feel washing performance from daily life impacted unless something special need to be washed. Therefore, I think cold wash still pretty welcome in China. Good evening. My name is Yatsuhiro Kuge from Sha. I'm a chief of Gemma washing machine performance working group. Making this an IT standard consistent has long been our challenge. The conventional IC test method does not match Japan's washing practice that use cold water. So it was difficult to have consistency between this and the IC. We are delighted that establishment of cold water wash testing method has finally brought us to the starting point of this challenge. Good evening, my name is Hiroyuki Fuji. From Panasonic, I have been working as a Japan delegate expert for IEC SC59D. Felix, so, uh, Felix we don't see the video. You don't see the video? No, you have to share again. Yeah. Can you see it? Yes. Previously, Sorry. contributed to installing testing method for virtual access washing machines in edition file issue in 2010. This time, I believe we will make further step one for globalization of IC standards by introducing cold water wash testing. My name is Akira Kitajima. I joined Cold Wash Project from year 2018 and contributed to the documentation of IC standard of cold wash testing method. Many cold wash countries joined this project and we had many discussions and the large scale of land loving test. And finally, we could reach to the draft of IC standard. We can say that uh, this is a standard which many cold wash countries have been waiting for a long time. Thank you very much. And as you can see, this is really a subject which is necessary for a large part of the world. So let me explain what are the basic differences between uh, cold water cleaning performance and the standard uh, cleaning performance. We have there three major issues. Number one is the washing machines, of course. 
number two, the water temperature, and also the test material. Let me start with the washing machines. A cold water washing machine has mostly only one water inlet and no temperature to choose. That means that uh, these aggregates are not having any type of possibility to add hot water, except from the outside when you let in hot water. But we want to test this with cold water. Of course, there are other washing machines which you also can test. For example, every machine which has the possibility of washing cold, but also has the possibility to set a heating temperature can be uh, tested. Of course, in this case, you must be, um, you must assure that there is no hot water or hot liquid coming into the washing machine or that the heating still is working in, a, in one way or another. And a second rule is that therefore it is not fair to compare washing machines which have a heater but are used as cold water washing machines and cold water washing machines which are purely cold water washing machines. Of course, you can test and compare all possibilities among themselves as long as you follow the rules of the test. Secondly, the water temperature. In all other IC uh, 6456 tests, in standard tests, we set a certain temperature, 20, 40, 60 degree, within a range then of two degrees. Here, we allow a range of temperature to be used between 15 and 25 degrees. This is what normally is uh, the temperature of tap water in most parts of the world. And you can use any temperature in this range. Of course, we also have to give there a certain, uh, how shall I say, uh, range what you can work in. So when you have tap water of 18 degree plus minus two degrees. According to these targets, we also had to adapt some of the test materials. We really took a long time, a lot of testing in the test houses, a lot of testing in IC to find out what kind of test material is really the best to show differences at these low temperatures. We started, of course, with the IC standard uh, uh, swatches, but we included all possibilities, whatever we could think of, we could, which could work better at 20 degree than the IC standard stain strip. So after many tests in laboratories, from Swisser test, from WFK, from CFT, we found out that some which are here on these uh, uh, graphics, which are very good. And we tested them in three pre-test series with 13 participants and 14 uh, uh, different stains to find out which are really the best. And in our opinion, it was the carbon black as we are using it at IEC, the gargoyle 212, which is a printed uh, part or a test material and the Japanese soil. But then we thought that this is a good combination, but it also has some disadvantages. One disadvantage is the size. All three test materials had different sizes. And of course, for a, a stain strip, we better use similar uh, sized uh, uh, swatches to add them really on the, on the load items. The second thing was that all three had different basic fabrics. All have been cotton, that is fine so far, but not the same as IEC has for the standard stain strip. We also found out that the effects of these three stains are a bit better on a different, but also cotton basic fabric. So we adapted this during the tests and the final round robin test you will make right now 
uh, will be already on this new basic fabric. And of course, you know, the sizes will be very similar to the swatches we are using in the standard uh, stain fabric. So here you see these both test materials on the upper side, uh, the standard stain strip, and on the lower side, the cold water wash stain strip. Uh, Günther Borcher will later explain the technical side a bit deeper of the new uh, 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 strip, but it will contain four different uh, swatches. One is the white one. You also can test, for example, uh, rinsing with this and the three uh, new stains. As you can see, there is no more difference in size, also not in the shape or in, uh, in how we make that. We tested these three types at many pre-trails. Pre I mentioned this to clarify conditions and materials which we needed to have, also the methodology. And we made two very extensive round robins in more than a dozen laboratories worldwide. Here you can see they came really from nearly everywhere in the world. Africa is missing, but we could not find somebody uh, in Africa to help us for this uh, project. We tried really to integrate all aspects of cold wash because the cold wash in Japan in China, in South America, in the United States are different. And we wanted to integrate that in all parts of the world, this can be tested. Okay, so far now I hand over uh, to Günther Borcher. Uh, he will present you the exactly work, uh, what the differences are to the main standard and how we are have to work with these new cold state strips. Günther, can you please take over? Thank you, Felix. And I hope you can all hear me. And um, so I will first start with a short introduction of myself. My name is Günther Butcher. I'm working for Swissertest uh, since uh, 2020. We are located in St. Gallen in Switzerland, and I'm responsible for uh, the business development, uh, all case of new test materials, and for that I'm also working in or a member in several groups of TC59D. Uh, my professional background is I'm textile specialist and uh, combined with a, a, a education in business management, and I'm also a member of the management board of Swiss Test. Uh, next slide, please, Felix. Uh, yeah, uh, how Felix mentioned today, I would like to tell you um, some or give you some information how the stain strip is working and have also a closer look into the single stains or into the single soilings of the stain strips. Um, what they are containing and what they, how they are made and uh, what is all in there. And, and yeah, for this, um, you can also read it then uh, if you need more information inside the standard itself is much more detailed there. About the stain strip, the strip is made of 100% uh, uh, cotton bleached uh, with 24 threads in warp and in weft. And uh, the one who already get it from you and uh, opened it and touched it, you can feel it is much a smoother fabric than the, um, than the standard IEC fabric. So this was one of the work we did uh, when we um, developed the, the final stain strip that we have seen it works much better on this smooth fabric than on the standard IEC fabric. It is a plain weave with a weight of about 100 grams per square meter of the, of the fabric. As Felix mentioned, it is one base fabric and three soilings and is to be used in uh, cold washing programs and very good suitable for the elevation of uh, cold water cleaning performance. 
it reacts very nice and very fine to uh, to on, on low temperatures and uh, they're especially also on mechanical on mechanical agitation okay uh, then um, next slide please felix yeah the structure um, i would like to tell you now some information about the single stains and uh, and the swatches. First of all, you see here the one is the unsoiled swatch, and and then uh, below there you see the cold car. We named it like this. Uh, the naming has also a reason. We want to avoid any um, that that there is any misunderstanding between the standard stain strip and the, the cold water stain strip. So the names are also different, so that there is not a mix in between these uh, two different stain strips. The cold car is the short, the short name. This the carbon black uh, mineral oil is a mixture of uh, mineral oil and soot pigment. It's well known soiling. It uh, the same soiling is also inside the standard stain strip. But it is applied on a different uh, on a different base fabric. So there is uh, not that you can um, have a look to one or the other because they are working really different because of the different base fabric on it. It, uh, it is a stain which is sensitive to the amount of detergent and the uh, level of agitation. The next one is the coal art. Uh, artificial soiling is related to the GIS C9606 based on oily components, nonogenic components like clay. And also there is, is it is containing a protein. Um, also, this is a well-known stain uh, or well-known soiling uh, in Japan. But also here, like at the carbon black, uh, it is applied on a different fabric, so there is not a direct link to the um, to the existing uh, cheese soiling on the other fabric because it's on a it's on another base fabric. Very sensitive to detergent, uh, also low amount agitation, and because it's containing uh, protein, uh, it is also uh, sensitive to protease uh, enzymes. And last one, this is, let's say, it's a, it's a rookie of a stain. It's a very new one. It is uh, the color call one. It is a single side applied pigment combination. I think this is the first time in, in a standard or in the 6456 that there is a one side applied uh, soiling used in, this, in the standard. Uh, it is printed on one side and it reacts also very good to mechanical agitation, temperature and detergents. Okay, so then please, uh, next slide, Felix. Some figures or some facts for the, for the single stain set. I, I start, it is not written here, but the unsoiled uh swatch has a reflectance value of it's bigger than 84 y values the cold car the cold carbon black mineral oil is about uh, 26 plus minus three the coal art the um, artificial sign related to cheese is about 40 plus minus three and the one side uh, printed stain is about 24 uh, plus minus three in the unwashed, uh, when it is unwashed. The washed reflectance values, we are still working on them. Uh, also here at Swiss Test, we need more data for this. So I would really love to share with you some uh, more information uh, how it is at 20 degrees with five kilo cotton uh, 
and with uh, with a with 2.5 kilocotton, but still we need some more data. We have it, um, but uh, I, we, I still don't want to um, to show it to you now because uh, we need we need some more washes made of uh, different production batch of the stain to have here really a good range and and fixed values on it. But uh, I think in the next couple of months we will. Uh, be able to show you then uh, these results too. With this, we will make the testing of the stain strip. So with these settings, uh, 20 degrees, 5 kilo cotton base and 20 degrees, 2.5 kilo cotton base plus a 30 degrees wash, we will make the quality control of the stains. So of the stain strips. So that it will always be the same. We will deliver to you in the future then always the figures uh, are based on these washing settings. Here you can find in the CD2 more information about uh, the initial values in 5.2.2.2. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, I would have a uh, close look what are the differences to the um, to the standard stain strips and here it shows very well uh, you will find it out uh, the attachment to the um, uh, to the load or to the load item and on the right side you can see uh, the um, the standard stain strips and on the left side you can see the cold water stain strip First of all, there is also a difference to the fifth edition, to the um, actual, uh, to the actual edition, that uh, the right side of the stain, or the I would call it the face of the stain, is now sued in a way that, uh, that the face is down to the load to the load side. Uh, you can see this then when you sew it right that the identification number or the batch number of the stain strip looks to the to the load item and not as it is today uh, that it is on 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 the top. Uh, then the position of the regarding the to the stain strip, you see on the right side the standard stain strip. These are five uh, soilings, and the length of the stain strip is almost the same like on for a load towel. So it fits very, very good to a load towel. So there you don't have to center it in some way. And on the left side, because uh, due, or due to the fact that we have now only four swatches and three soilings, the um, stain strip is much shorter. So it is placed on the right side on the top. and sued it there. Okay. Now, please, the next slide. This causes then also a difference uh, for folding the towel. Well, you can see this on in this picture. The folding is different as it is for the standard stain strip means that you have to fold it first once in the length and in the second step uh, you, you have to fold the, the load item again once in uh, where you see here the line that it is centered and on the top for that reason to show it a little bit better to you uh, we have done a short video uh fix and go to the next slide and start it yeah uh here you can see the suit stain strip and also here it's very good to see the batch identification of the stain strip how it's suit and you flip it towards the load towel uh, stop and here you can see very good uh it is good to identify now that the, um, when it is sued right that the one side printed stain looks uh, towards to the towel and the white side of the stain is on top. 
So this is very, very good to identify and it gives you a check that the stain is sewed right to the towel. Okay. One more time. That's good, Felix. Perfect. Batch identification. Right side against to the towel. See that it is the right. And then it's folded once first in the length, second time again. And so in this, and so like this, it is then ready to use or for the further use. Okay. Then um, next is then to proceed the the test runs according to the to the CD2 to the standard with uh, load with the detergent and with the certain amount of washes. At this, there is also an example you could uh, combine. The, um, the testing now with the gentleness of action test. So it is also possible to combine the cold water uh, wash performance with the gentleness of action. But the process is from this stage on, it is um, more or less, it is the same as you have to do it with the standard stainless steel. Uh, when you have uh, done it, you have to remove after the washes, you have to remove the stain strips and dry them and at like the several way as it is uh, described in the standard and flat the stain strip spiral. As mentioned, it is equal as you do it with the standard stain strip. Also, the assessment of the stain strips is done uh, like uh, with, the, uh, with the standard stain strips, the measurement has to be done at four times on the upper side of the stains. And please uh, be sure that you don't have less than four layers of the same type of stains when you of the same type of stain when you are doing the measure. Okay. Good. And at the end, uh, you have to fill in the results into the evaluation sheet. <clears throat> As there are only three soilings in the, um, in the cold water stain, uh, you have to note it in the relevant uh, in the fields of the, of the Excel sheets. Um, you may note that there is uh, also in the cell still an old name inside uh, from the one side printed stain. There is written gargoyle. Uh, please note this that uh, the coal one or the one side printed stain is equal to the gargoyle that you fill in the results right in the evaluation sheet. Please also. I uh, can only uh, suggest here, please follow also for this, the webinar for the for the evaluation sheet, then uh, to be sure how to hand, how the evaluation sheet has to be handled and how to select the right, uh, the right uh, programs, the right stains, etc. Okay, good. So that's it from us from my side if you have any questions please uh it's now the moment to ask felix or me uh if you have any further questions or you need anything uh, to know about the cold water stain strip not seems to be the case so questions please <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot of new stuff uh, yeah so there should be a lot of questions perhaps just one remark Günther, can you please confirm that this uh, coal one stain was also the reason why we had to change the uh, the uh, ref reflectometer measurement. Uh, so we had to go to a one-sided measurement just to ensure yep. that uh, we are measuring the right value. 
um, which yep. is for this one-sided printed material, only this side which was printed. And to avoid yep. confusion, uh, we, mm -hmm. we changed the measurement for all of the stains to a one-sided measurement. Yeah, you have to do it. You can do it only by one side measuring. So, and for to uh, to make it easy and equal for all, uh, this th that's correct, Brian. Yeah, that's that's the reason. Yeah, because you cannot measure the left side as you do it until now in the in the fifth edition, because then you would measure the white side of the stain. Good. Any more questions? Come on, we have time. Yeah, we have time. Man. Now you can ask everything what you have on in your mind. Please. Um, you just mentioned that in the Excel sheet there is um, still the wrong name. In. I don't yeah. know. Marcus is with us. Uh, and he is, um, let's say, preparing every day a new version of the Excel sheet. Perhaps he can also include this change in the next version. Or is it already in? No, not yet. Oh, no, it's, it's not in because it's not in the CD2. I've looked up the CD2 and this is not in the CD2. So uh, therefore, it's not in the template because I was not aware of it. We can change it, but then it does not fit to the CD2. But in the CD2, we have the, the new names in. I've looked up for call art and I didn't find call art. No, it should. I thought it should be in maybe in the. In the annex, um, it's, it's in. I, annex. I made the changes. OK. So. Is it written different? Don't C -O -L? ask. COL? <laughs> okay, when it's in, I can change it with the next version. Uh, that's not a problem. So it's yeah. Then we no. should, then I should change it because it should fit to the CD two. But I missed that. So yes, yeah, so it's I... it's in. I find it. Gunula speaking. Okay, it's in, I, in the yeah, in the in, in the yeah. annex. But the there end. is an empty space between the dash and the words cool car, cool art, and cool one. So you need to search for C O L only, then you find it in the Annex A. Yeah, it's page 98, Marcus. Yeah, yeah, okay. 98. So yeah. maybe one should take a note in the comment sheet that we make it align throughout the standard. It might not be always the same. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's one with a with a blank. So two are with a blank in and one is without. Yeah. In. The writing is not uh, editorial wise exactly the same. Yeah. And because of the blanks, I didn't find it yet. If I, yeah. if I looked at it today. Yeah. But okay, um, but only if you make the next version, then perhaps you can yeah. correct this as well. Yeah. Uh, this would be great. Yeah. Um, then, only some general remarks. Uh, have a look to the Point eight point nine in the standard. There it is described uh, for what it is how, that you can combine it with the gentleness of action. <clears throat> uh, the reference programs, uh, etc., and also have a look to the Annex A, uh, where the stains and also the namings are where the namings are described. This is uh, very useful and if you see here something please let us know if we have so if there is a something which is not clear or which is to change yeah yeah and we we prefer um the the writing without blanks i think yes um, no in most cases it's written with the blank with two blanks with two blanks one before and mm -hmm. No, with one. Mm. 
with two blanks, one before and one after the dash. Yeah. And just once is without blank. Okay. Good. Anything? Anything you want? Somebody wants to know. Rolando. Yes, sir. I am Rolando from UL. I have just a question. How to fix the stay strike to the tower? This means that in addition five, the standard measure sewing or by fast, something that but is not metallic. How does the addition six allow this fastening? So we have to sew only or something that like a plastic uh, fastening or something like this. Okay. Um... I can only answer how we do it always. It's a sewing. And honestly speaking, maybe Gundula or Reiner has to help me here if there are allowed any other ways to attach the, the um, stain strip to the, to the load, because yes. we know it only by sewing. Yes, it's only by sewing. This was changed. Mm -hmm. And we now only accept sewing. Because they, we had some problems with the, with the fasteners. Uh, I think when they go to the dump dryer and a wash or dryer test, then you may have problems. Rolando, is that okay? Yes, thank you. Okay. So, any more questions? Yeah, if that's not the case, I think we can stop. I thank uh, you both, uh, Felix and Günther, for this presentation. And um, I invite you all to the next uh, webinar, which is on Thursday. Here we have uh, actually three points. The new evaluation method for the cleaning performance, the energy and water consumption and program duration measurement. There had been some changes and adaptations. And as a new measure, the temperature of the load measured inside the load. So all of that you will see and hear and learn on Thursday. And I would be happy to meet you all uh, next Thursday. So have a good day and see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.